With summertime just around the corner, this DIY is ideal. I'm gonna be making an outdoor sun lounger. What I have done is I've made it out of standard 21 millimeter shutter ply, and I've used the standard size of 144, so if you want to make it out of normal plain door round timber, that's the standard size. As usual, I've taken my cutting list to builders and they've cut it all for me. So all I have to do now is just start assembling it, which is the fun part. Let me just show you what tools we're gonna to be using. I've got a sander, a jigsaw, We've got some wheels, we've got a set square, we've got a dowel stick, we've got some hinges, some nuts and bolts, some screws, some wood glue, some wood sealer and a paintbrush, cordless drills, tape measure, pencil, drill bits, with the gel wood stain, sponge, and my favorite tool, the Craig pocket hole jig. We're gonna start off by putting in our pocket holes on the inside, and the nice thing about this project with the pocket holes is everything is hidden away so you're not going to see any screw holes or any top of the screw heads. So my slats are basically going to be sitting on top and they're going to run all the way along. So I've got to mark out on here where my pocket holes need to be and what I am going to do is use some standard spaces which is the thickness of the timber that's going to be the spacing between each slat. I'm only doing seven steps because those are going to be the ones which are fixed to the base and then we're going to have a lifting back so that's going to be separate. Now to get the Craig tool out. When using the Craig tool, it can be quite messy. There's a lot of sawdust which gets discharged. So I'm gonna make use of my vacuum and just keeps the working environment much cleaner and easier to work in. I'm gonna proceed with the rest of the pocket holes all the way down to my markings and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing on the other piece, but remember it's going to be a mirror image. So Tim will be on the other side and uh, we'll get, carry on accordingly. So now I've got my two end pieces and I'm gonna put pocket holes on either side as well on both pieces. That's the pocket holes done for the box frame. Uh, now I'm gonna start assembling it, remove this guy out the way and we're gonna build it on top of our bench and then I'm gonna put the slats underneath and then screw those down as well. Remember, it's always a good idea to put some wood glue in between your mating surfaces. Clamped into position. Insert your Craig screw and you'll see how this Craig screw will pull those two pieces of timber together and make a secure joint. My framework is done, it's secure. I'm gonna quickly move this out the way. Right, basically this is our slats. I'm just gonna lay them out on the edge and I'm using standard off-cut pieces so I get the same spacing for every slat. I've got seven slats to do. We've got our last piece coming in and I'm just gonna line it up with the edge of my bench so I've got every piece in line. I'll quickly put some wood glue on. Same on the other side. Framework's gonna come back in. We're gonna place that on top. That's all clamped into place. I've got equal spacing on every single slat. I'm now gonna get a bit of a production line going and get all my Craig screws in and then drive them all the way down into the timber. Also just double checking that I still have got a flush edge on this outer surface. What I'm gonna do next is the actual backrest. That's not gonna be attached to this. We're gonna join that with some bolts later on. Let's move this out the way. We don't need that anymore. We're going to be doing our backrest, which is exactly the same. We're going to be using the same size spacers. Now I've got two cross braces here, which are 770 long. And we're going to put those 75 in from the sides. Exact same principle. We're just lining everything up so it's flush and square with the edge of my workbench. Just marking it now so I know exactly where to put the pocket holes. So in go our Craig screws, glue on the mating surfaces and clamp it down to position. Make sure your spacing is correct, and away we go. And there's our backrest frame. Whilst I've got it in position and upside down, I'm actually gonna put on my hinges and drill the hole for the pivot, which is gonna have our adjuster so we can have all the different heights on it. I've used two back flat hinges. What I have done, remember, this is overhanging over the edge of the box frame, so you're gonna to have to allow a bit of a spacer there before you put your hinge in. Exactly the same thing on the other side, and then we'll just screw it in. I'm going to be going 355 millimeters, that's to my pivot point, the adjustment bracket. And I'm going to want to go down 20 mils. And I'm going to drill with an 8 millimeter drill bit, because I've got an 8 millimeter bolt, which is going to clamp the other two bits together. Now for the ratchet lever mechanism, which is going to be your height adjustment on the backrest. I need a 22 millimeter hole on the end here, and I'm also going to round the edges as well. So it's going to rotate nice and smoothly and those corners don't catch the base. Let's mark this up first of all. So I'm gonna go 22 
both sides. One side is going to have the 22mm dowel stick and the other side is going to be the 8mm bolt hole. I'm just marking up the edge here so that I get a nice rounded surface. Remember that's going to be rotating, you want it to be clearing here. What we can do, we can use a jigsaw to cut this off or we can just use it on the sanding machine over on this bench there. First thing I need to do is drill my holes, 8mm one side and 22 the other side. I'm now going to make use of my sander just to round these edges. You can use a sander or you can use a jigsaw. Right, we've got our two pieces. I've cut my dowel stick and I've gone a little bit on the inside of the box. I've measured that so basically it's 700 minus two thicknesses and a little bit of a clearance. I've added another five mils on either side just to give a little bit of clearance so it doesn't catch on the box frame. You're going to put the dowel stick all the way through and then one this side, and that's going to sit on the outside edge of our box frame. Might as well bolt it into position now. I'm using cup squares. Now this actually pushes itself into the timber and locks on the one side, and I like it because it's got a bit more of an attractive head than a normal hex bolt. Right, flip that over. There you have it. So that's going to pivot like so and our swing arm is going to go up and down and now that's going to locate into our box and into the ratchet rack which I've still got to build next. Let's clear the desk, move everything out the way and bring the box back. Okay the box frame is back, let me show you what I'm going to do for the ratchet system. We've got uh, a runner on the bottom and then I've cut, and I'll show you how to make these shortly, I've cut little wedges like so. So these are going to be sitting in place. We're going to have numerous ones of those all the way along and it's going to make like a sawtooth rack. I've taken 30 mils on the top and then down at 45 degrees. Very straightforward. So we'll just measure out 30, 45 degrees. This is my set square. I'm going to put four either side, so I need a total of eight. When you're going to cut them, I'm going to make use of a jigsaw, but you can use a normal crosscut saw. I'm going to put in the bottom runner. I'm using a piece there just to act as a spacer to bring it up from the bottom. This is the 500 mil piece which we've had pre-cut. So let's get that runner fastened first. Now I'm going to put the wedges in. We're going to have four either side. I'm going to start the first one off 150 from the side here to the back. Okay, and again I'm using the spacers, uh, the thickness of my material to act as a spacer. So it's the same every single time. That's it. I've done the one ratchet side, I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Okay, both ratchet racks are done. I'm now going to flip this over and we can put on our backrest. Remember where the two halves join, we want to keep that spacing consistent. So I'm going to put in my spacer. So what we need to do now is we need to put in a little spaces for our hinge. So our hinge can actually join onto the side here. I'm going to make use of my Craig clamp just to hold into position. I'm going to put some wood glue on the mating surface and then I'm going to screw it down. Okay. Our hinges are in, now let's put the legs on the far side and then we're going to mount the holes for the wheels too. The reason why I chose a 185 leg is it's the same size as my wheels. So these wheels are going to be placed on the other side and we're going to lock it into position and exactly the same on this side. Now I'm just going to measure out exactly where I want the center hole for the, for the bolt hole and half of the diameter is going to be 92.5. I'm going to let the wheel overlap on the back slightly. That's going to go 40 mils from the inside. I've got my position marked. I'm going to drill a 10 millimeter hole and then I'm going to use a 10 millimeter bolt to actually fasten these wheels to the frame. So here's the moment of truth. We're actually going to lift this up and our ratchet system should fall into place. Perfect, there's our one setting and you can just move it up as you wish and it locks into place. To lower it down, you lift it up, move the ratchet back, and away you go. Now we're gonna to have to do some PT. We're gonna give it a good sanding, get rid of any sharp edges, any burrs, any splinters, and then I'm gonna put two coats of Woodock gel stain. I'm gonna go for a dark and boyer color, and then I'm gonna follow it up with three coats of outdoor wood sealer. I'm gonna use a Woodock 50. If you enjoyed this DIY, like it, share it, and you can subscribe to our channel.